The Nazis repudiated two of the fundamental values that Christianity has always enshrined. And one, one of them you, you, you just touched on, the, the idea that um, uh, the, survi you know, the survival of the fittest, mm. that the, the idea that, that to be strong is to be good. Mm. You know, it was kind of a fairly fundamental idea, for, say, say, for the Greeks. I mean, they kind of conflated, uh, you know, the good beauty and a goodness and strength. You know, this it was to be, to be a good person. Um, but, of course, the other uh, fundamental Christian ideal that the Nazis repudiate is the idea that, as Paul put it, there is no Jew or Greek. Mm. Um, and that in turn is a kind of refinement of the, the, the teaching of Genesis, that God creates man and woman in his image. And therefore, if men and women are created in the image of God, every human being has an inherent dignity. Um, and this is an idea that over the course of the Middle Ages kind of feeds into the idea that human beings have rights, that if you know, and, and this is something that um, that, that churchmen and uh, lawyers in in the twelfth century start to extrapolate from the gospel teachings. If Christ is saying to the wealthy, "You have a duty to to feed the hungry and to clothe those who have no clothes and to give shelter to those who are homeless," then it follows that the hungry have a right to food, and those without clothes have a right to clothes, and those who don't have a home have a right to a home. And so you start to, to get the idea that human beings have inherent rights. And these are ideas that secularized feed into the American Revolution, into the French Revolution, into um, uh, United Nations. Um, it's, it's a very, very um, profound idea that today, for lots of people who believe in human rights, they, they tend to kind of assume that they are imminent. But in the long run, you know, when you look at it in the kind of historical perspective, to believe in human rights requires just as much a, a leap of faith as believing that the Lord Jesus Christ rose on the third day and ascended into heaven. I mean, it's, it, these, are, these are theological precepts, three, theological ideas that um, have been bred specifically of Christian history. And the genius of the West has been to kind of package them and market them as though somehow they've been, you know, removed from the Christian context that gave them birth. Yeah. And I think that, that one of the things that we're seeing, you know, seen over the past few decades, really since the, the, the 21st century, is that as Western power and influence retreats, so more and more of the world is kind of basically saying, well, you know, these ideas, these ideals are, you know, these are culturally contingent. These are your ideas. They're not our ideas. Um, and I think that this is unsettling for people in the West precisely because we have the kind of, you know, the shadow of the Nazis hangs over mm. us because the Nazis absolutely did think against Paul that mm. Jews and Greeks were completely separate. Uh, and, and, and we know where that led. Mm. And part of the horror of, of the Holocaust, the kind of the horror and the, the, you know, the, the most grotesque irony in the history of Christendom is that... Um, Hitler saw Paul, St. Paul, who said there is no Jew or Greek, as the embodiment of a kind of pernicious cosmopolitan, a Jewish cosmopolitanism that he saw as having destroyed Greece and Rome. He thought this idea that there is no Jew or Greek, that there is no slave or free, that there is no man or woman, had corrupted classical civilization and destroyed it. So your thinking behind that is Hitler thought that the Jews were subhuman, they were not human, and he, somehow they well, climbed he, under the idea. He, he, he saw them as, a, as, a, as, as a, a, the most dangerous enemy of the strong, mm. that... Paul is preaching yeah. Christ crucified. He's preaching this dead man on a cross. He's preaching this universalism, this cosmopolitanism, mm. and this destroys the Roman Empire. Mm. And so he, Hitler thinks that um, if his Reich is going to last a thousand mm. years and not be brought down by a creeping Jewish cosmopolitanism, then he has to get rid of the Jews. But there's a case for saying that he targets the Jews for, for genocide because he blames them for Christianity. Which, considering the fact that that he 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 draws on all, obviously all kinds of kind of very venerable Christian anti-Semitic anti-Jewish propaganda, I mean, it's just the kind of the most hideous mm. irony and paradox.